Oh, praise the Lord, church. Good evening, everybody. It's a blessing to be back with us once again in the house of the Lord. I hope everybody's been having a blessed and safe week. Hope everybody has been uh, wearing their face covering and taking care of themselves. Uh, now, on our prayer and our healing list, we want to continue to pray for those we ask for every week. And uh, those of us who are members here at our church, you know, we, you know, we have bulletins on the back of the bulletins and uh, uh, inside the bulletins. So we want to take those home with us and, and uh, pray for everybody that's in the, on the bulletin, on the sick list. Amen. And uh, also, we want you to continue to uh, pray for our church, pray for our church family, and continue to hold Pastor Hill up in our prayer. And, and during your prayer time this week, uh, uh, hold up uh, the whole state of Kentucky and Arkansas and Tennessee. Uh, those people down there, they had a rough go up here a couple of days ago. Tornadoes went through there and just uh, completely decimated their city, their homes. A lot of people were killed. So we want to bless them and ask God to bless those people uh, in every way that they stand in need. We never know when it's going to be our turn, church. So let us uh, continue to hold them up in our prayer and love each other. Okay? All right, if you will, let us bow here. Uh, our Father and our God, Father, we thank you for the privilege to come into your presence once again to bless you. Thank you for your word today, dear Lord. Thank you for the wonderful message that we received this morning. So we just pray, oh God, that you would bless and bless those who are sick, bless those who are shut in, those who are in bereavement, those who are suffering, dear Lord, uh, those who are down in Kentucky and Tennessee and Arkansas and wherever there was that awful tragedy, dear Lord, concerning the storm. So we just ask you to bless them in a special way. We love you, dear Lord. We thank you for every spiritual blessing that you give us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now bless us as we study your word today. Let it not go out and come back for us. we pray in your precious name. Amen. All right, church. Let us get after our lesson. Uh, now, we're going we're gonna to try to button this up today. From what we've been studying here in the last few weeks, we've been studying on being an encourager and not a critic. So we're going to kind of button that up today, and then we're going to start into our new lesson. Amen? But for, I want to pick back up just a little bit, review just a bit to get us back up to speed from where we were last week. So if you will, if you would turn with me in your Bibles today, we just want to read here this uh, a passage here in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44. That will kind of get us back up to where we stopped off at last week. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44. And we're reading this here from, as we said, from the uh, NIV translation. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Amen. Love your enemies. And then look how it starts out. He said, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Amen. In other words, be aware that as a follower of Jesus Christ, this is very careful, you will be criticized. Amen. If you are following Jesus Christ, you will be criticized. So instead of focusing on the criticism, what you do is you pray. Amen. That takes your way, that takes your mind away from the criticism. That takes your mind away from, the, from the stress of the criticism. You just pray. Amen. And just say, Lord, I want to be like Christ. Just as Jesus was unjustly criticized. I should expect to be criticized as well. Rather than feeling rejected, I choose to rejoice in the privilege of suffering in this way. And I thank you, Father, for your rewarding me by calling me blessed. Amen. I thank you for rewarding me by calling me blessed. Amen. See, the Lord said we are blessed. You see? When, when, when we pray like that and when we are criticized to so forth. Now, again, I want to take you to uh, Matthew chapter 5. 
I want you to turn there to Matthew chapter 5, and we want to look at uh, verse 11 of this text. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11. This is what it says. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Amen. So, so don't be afraid to share with people about Jesus. Don't be afraid to talk about Jesus. Because the Lord said, you are blessed when people insult you. It, you're blessed when they insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of him. Amen. He said you are blessed. You see. So, so we want you to be encouraged, you see, that, that, that you will be disciplined by God because you are his child. We want to always remember that. You see, be encouraged. Don't be discouraged, but be encouraged that you will be disciplined by God because you're his child. See, a father will discipline his child whom he loves. Amen. God loves us. You see? So, so always, always keep prayer at the, at the forefront of everything. God tells us to pray without ceasing. Amen. And just pray and say, Lord, thank you for loving me and dealing with me as a loving father by disciplining me when I need correction. Amen. Say, I choose to receive all discipline from you as a sign of your devotion to me and of your acceptance of me as your child. We are children of God. Amen. And he will have, he will discipline us at times. And not, not because he, he wants to hurt us, it's because he loves us. Because he loves us and he wants to bless us. Amen. And, and, and it's just that you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. There in Hebrew, chapter 12, verses 5 through 6, where it says, My sons do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart. When he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Amen. He punishes everyone that he accepts as a son. You see, listen, church, as, as, we, as we're going to wrap this up. Listen, the Christian view of suffering. Amen. The Christian view of suffering. It, it is now presented. You see, why do persecution and testing and trials and sickness and pain and sorrow and trouble, why do they come into the life of the believer? People ask that question a lot when things happen to them, when things don't go their way or some kind of uh, uh, catastrophe happens to them. They want to know why. Why does this come into the life of belief? Well, you see, the first thing they want to know, are, 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 are they a sign of God's anger or, or displeasure? Or do they happen by chance and so forth? Amen. How should we react to them? Well, these verses here, church, teaches that these things are part of God's educated process. For us as his children. That's what they are. And that's how we have to look at it. Amen. You see. All those who do not come from God. Please understand. They do not come from God. But he permits them. He permits them. Then he overrules them. For his glory. He don't cause them. But he permits them. He permits them. Then that means he can overrule them. If he overruled them, he overruled for his glory. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And it does it for our good and for the blessings of others. Amen. So, so, so we want to uh, depend on the Lord's perspective to determine our worth and our value. That's what we're going to be talking about here uh, in this next lesson is, is our worth. Is our value and our worth. See, we are worth something to God. We are, we are somebody special. Amen. Not on the opinion of us. 
See, we can stay too focused on other people's opinion, and we'll lose out on what God telling us and how God looks at us. Amen. You see, you, when you when you find yourself in that situation, again, I say again, just pray. If you don't know what else to do, prayer always works. Just pray and say, Lord, thank you for establishing my worth and my value by dying for me and, and adopting me into your family. Amen. Is I will not live for the approval of people. For I have your approval. And that's all we need. We just that's all we need is God's approval. Amen. Because that's the only approval that really matters, church. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And that is all that we will ever need is God's approval. So 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 thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me so much. Amen. Because you know the word of God tells us that in Galatians. Uh, chapter uh, uh, Galatians chapter 1 and verses 10 where he tells us that am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God or am I trying to please men if I was still trying to please men I would not be a servant of Christ amen he said I would not be a servant of Christ you see you, the Bible tells you you can't serve two masters you can't try to please men and then try to please God. You're never going to please men. You're never going to please the flesh. Amen. That's a high bar. And that bar can never, you can never reach that bar trying to please men. Stay tuned to trying to please God. Amen. Now, now, now look what Paul is telling us here. Paul is probably reminded at this point that his enemies accuse him of changing the message to suit his audience. Amen. This is what his enemies are doing. Accusing him of changing his message to please men. So, so he asks, is in effect, he says, in, in insisting that there is only one gospel, am I trying to please men or God? Since there's only one gospel. Amen. You see. Obviously so, he is not trying to please men. I said obviously, and the reason why I said obviously he's not trying to please men, because they hate the suggestion that there is only one way to heaven. They hate that. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Over there in John, you see, listen, I, I heard one of the most powerful women, supposed to be one of the most powerful women, especially the powerful black woman, in the world or in America. Amen. She had said that there is one well, there is more than one way to heaven. There's more than one way. Now I don't know where she got that from because I am I've been searching the Bible over and over and over and I don't see it. Amen. So I'm not sure where she where she got that from. See, you have to be careful about when you say things like that when you when you in celebrity and you know you have all this of celebrity and fame, many people will believe that. Amen? But don't, you have to believe what God said. That, like he tells us in Isaiah, who report what we believe? We have to believe what the word of God said. And the word of God says in John 14 and 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by me. Except by me. When he said no one that means no one. That means he said, I am the way. There is no other way. Amen. God, Jesus Christ is the only way to God, to heaven. Amen. You see, so 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 in other words, if Paul changed his message here to suit men, then he would not be a born servant of Christ. It's the same way with us. If we're gonna try to please men, Rather than, rather than Christ, then we cannot be bond servants of Jesus Christ. Amen. As I already indicated before, we can't serve two men. You either love the one and hate the other. Amen. So, so in fact, he said he would be inviting the wrath of God to fall upon him if he did that. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? All right. Amen. So, so, so as we button this up, as we button this particular lesson up, I'm, I, I'm praying that it has been a blessing to us because I know I've been blessed by, by, by studying it and being able to prepare it and bring it to you. 
Amen. Now, people who don't know their purpose, they try to do too much. When you don't know your purpose, you try to do too much. And that causes stress, it causes fatigue, and it causes conflict. Amen. It is impossible to do everything people want you to do. We have just enough time to do God's will. And that's what we ought to spend that time on, doing God's will. Amen? Because we can waste a lifetime trying to do our will, trying to please other people. Do God's will. We just have enough time for that. So, so stay encouraged and be an encourager. Stay encouraged and be an encourager and not a critic. Amen? So that's, that's a wrap on this particular lesson. Amen? I hope this lesson has been encouraging and I hope it has been a blessing. Amen? I hope it's been encouraging and I hope it's been a blessing. So, so, so now we, we're going to open up uh, on our new lesson. Amen. We are we gonna, we gonna open up on our new lesson. So, so I want you to turn with me uh, today in the lesson that we're dealing with today uh, in this particular series is we're gonna be looking at self worth, discover or discovering your God given worth. Amen. Discovering your God given worth. You know, there's some people who don't think they worth anything. And, and, and most of it is because that's what they've been taught. That's what they've been told. Okay? But we're going we gonna, to we gonna prove all of that to be false throughout this lesson. If you'll follow along with me, and I pray that you'll follow along with me uh, on each and every uh, week as we unpack this particular lesson. So today I want you to turn with me uh, in this next lesson dealing with Discovering your God-given worth. I want you to turn with me to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, and we want to look at uh, chapter 16. And, and I just want to lift out this one passage of scripture here, and then we're going to unpack the rest of it. Amen? 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we want to look at verses 7. Look what it says. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance as his uh, on his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. The Lord looks at the heart. Now, I want you to keep reading, follow along with me here in verses 4 through 13. Look what it said. When Samuel came to Bethlehem, the elders trembled after inviting Jesse and his sons to the sacrificial feast. He looked over the men one by one, confident that the next king was before him. But none was the Lord's choice. Samuel would have learned from his experience with Saul. Amen. With Saul, that the outward man is not nearly as important as the inner man. Now, let, let, let me share this with you. Speaking of worth and discovering the worth, some of you might recall there used to be an old guy that be downtown in the city of Aiken. They used to call him Rags. And Rags would walk around, he was unkept, had his, you know, long beard and, 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 and uh, you know, ruddy looking clothing and so forth. He used to have his, his feet wrapped in burlap bags in the wintertime to keep his feet and so forth warm and, and, and so forth. Amen. And, and uh, uh, people would always just kind of just, you know, look at him as a homeless, Nobody. Amen. But then when when Rag died, they discovered that Rag was a millionaire. Amen. He had he, he had money. 
But he looked like he wasn't, he looked like he didn't have anything. He looked like he was just, you, you know, a vagabond. Amen. So, so we can't judge people going by how they look. We can't judge them on that. You, you never know who, who a person is. Amen. Just because they don't look like we do. Just because they don't appear to have what we have. And so forth. Amen. Some of you might remember that old man. Okay? So, 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 so don't ever think that because somebody looks a certain way or don't uh, have what you have and so forth, that they're not worth anything. God can use anybody. God didn't make no junk. God created us human beings in his image. So we all are somebody. We all have worth. Amen? Now look here in verses. Uh, where, where Sammy said here, it, uh, the outer man is not merely as important as the inner man. Right here in, in 1 Samuel 13 and in verse 14. Amen? You see, God judges the heart. That's what he tells us right in the 7th verse of the 16th uh, chapter. God judges the heart. Now, the principle here, listen carefully, the principle here of verse 7 has always been true. That has always been true. People do judge by looks, dress, and outward appearance, and outward things. That's how people judge you. Amen? You see? But today, the mass meeting, just look at the mass meeting. They encourage this faulty outlook by using glamorous people in advertising, and in television, and in print matters, and so forth. And, and there's another person I want I want to kind of bring to you. Remember, some of you uh, might be uh, aware of this and might remember this. There used to be a television reporter at, that she worked at one of the local television stations here in the day, and her name was uh, Aretha Phillips. Amen. A great reporter, and, and it was my understanding they didn't want her to be an anchor person because. She didn't have the, the looks that they were looking for. She wasn't good looking enough. Amen. She wasn't attractive enough. Are you listening to me? Great report. Some of you might remember her. Amen. You see, this is what the media and so forth, they looked at that in, in, in these things. To such an extent that ordinary looking people don't seem as satisfactory as they should. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see that? Watch this. You see, Saul was tall, he was dark, and he was handsome. Well, actually, David was good looking too. Amen, as, as he tells us in this uh, 12th verse of this uh, 16th chapter. But he was still looked too young for major service. Unfortunately, though, church, especially on television, amen, especially on television, has often emphasized not spiritual but superficial glamour. Amen. With disastrous results. Result. When, when, when these TV idols fall, amen, and we have seen many of them fall. Amen. Now, as a child, what happened? What happens when you long to receive, say, a gift, but only your brother or your sister is given the gift? Or what happens when you long to be held on your mother or your father's lap, but only your brother or sister are alive on your mother or your father's lap? Amen. What happens when you long, you see, for your mother, your father's love, but only your sister or your brother is giving his or her love? Amen. You see, in other words, what I'm saying to us is that repeated rejection is the breeding ground for low self-worth. Amen. Repeated rejection is the breeding ground. Amen? For low self-worth. You see, 
Your own mother or your own father never even wanted you. Amen. They always called you ugly. Amen. You never received the love and the affection that your heart so deeply craved for them. But what a comfort to come to know this truth here in verse 7, chapter 16 and verse 7. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the idle appearance, but the Lord, he looks at the heart. Amen. These are some of the things that you have to talk to and tell your children. And you have to talk to yourself. We have to do self-talk. We are worth something. As I said, God didn't make no junk. We all have worth. Amen? So with all that going on, why would you feel any sense of worth? With all of that going on in your life. Your life was filled with rejection. Filled with rejection all your life. Your mother, your father would always leave you in charge of your little brother or your little sister for hours at a time. Amen. Here you are now, a six-year-old responsible for the total care of a five-year-old. Amen. And each time you long desperately for your mother or your father to return saying to yourself, I hope mom, I hope dad will be glad to see me. I hope he'll be glad to see me when he comes. Amen. But each time they return, they brush right past you. Amen. To gather your little brother and your little sister in their arms and give them a great big old kiss and a big old hug. Amen. Sometimes he's bringing them a gift. Always showering and attention on them. But attention never shown to you. Never shown to you. Amen. You see, no wonder you were left uh, really with low set work. No wonder you were left feeling like that. You know, as over in Psalms chapter 69 and verse 20 said, scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. Do you know there's a lot of people, a lot of children are in that situation today? Just feeling like they're not worth anything because they're being made to feel that way. But I want to encourage you that you are worth it. You have worth it. Amen? You have worth it because God loves you. God died on the cross for you. So you have work. We all have work. Amen. Please listen to me carefully today. You see, you, there you are, you looked in back for comfort. You felt all alone. Amen. You see, as a child, you didn't have any concept of self-work when you were a child. How could you? Amen? How could you? As a continually rejected child, how could you feel any sense of significance, of value, or of worth? How could you? Even more basic than that, listen carefully. How do you determine the worth of, of something or someone? How do you try to determine that? Huh? How do you know your own worth? It's very important that you know that. How do you know that? How do you determine that? Do you look at yourself or others in order to grasp your value? Do you look at others for that? Listen, church. If you look anywhere other than God, the God who created you with a purpose and a plan, your view of your own value is in great danger of being destroyed. If you look at anywhere except to God. Amen. 
Before you were ever even born, God had established your real worth by knowing you. Amen. And me. By choosing you. And ultimately by dying for you. Amen. By dying for you. You see, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, he said, he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. He chose us. Amen. We are somebody special. You are somebody special. Amen. Regardless of what you have or what you don't have. How much education you have, where you live, where you work. You see, the, the, the organization you belong to and don't belong to, none of that has no bearing on your work in the sight of God. Amen? You see, work, listen very carefully, work signifies the value, merit, or significance of a person or a thing. Okay? Self-worth is the belief that your life has value and significance. And it does. Never let nobody tell you that. Your life has value. Your life has worth. And your life has significance. Amen. Because you was created in the image of God. And God loves you so much. Loves us so much that he died for us. Amen. How much more evidence do we need to know or have to know that we're worth something. Amen? You see, worth is translated here in the, in the Greek word. Amen? It's translated in the Greek word here. Uh, axio. A-X-I-O-S. Axio. Which means a weight of worth. Amen? Well, in biblical times, see, gold and other precious metals were placed on a balancing scale where their worth was determined by their weight. Amen? Leading to the expression that we see there in Lamentations, chapter 4 and 2, worth their weight in gold. Amen? So, so how can your worth be determined? So you listen to me carefully. How can it be determined? Well, if you've ever been to an auction, if you've ever been to an auction and know anything about auctions, then you know the worth of an item is determined clearly and simply by one thing. The highest price paid. Amen. The highest price paid. Jesus Christ paid the highest price that could be paid to show us how much we would worth in it. Amen. Each item in an auction, it goes to the highest bidder. Amen. We were bought, amen, from the auction block of sin. Amen. We were bought from the auction block of sin over 2,000 years ago when our Heavenly Father paid the highest price possible the life of His only Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You see? And by that one act, by that one act, our worth was forever established by God. Amen. Let nobody else tell you what you were or place your worth in, in a box. Never let nobody do that to you. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for you and for me. And he did it willingly, dying on that cross, paying the penalty for our sin. Amen. He loves us just that much. And that tells you that you are worth somebody. You are, we are somebody special. Amen? We're somebody very special. It doesn't matter. See, your worth, don't deter, you're not determined by what you have or don't have. Amen? You see, your true worth is not based on anything that you have done or will do. That's not what it's based on but on what Christ has already done. That's what it's based on. Without a doubt, he established our worth. We were worth his life. 
we will work down. What a blessing that is. What a blessing that is to know. You have to believe that. See, the world would have you to think that you are somebody other than who God says you are. Amen? But we don't listen to that. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I want you to turn with me once again in your Bible. And if you're not there where you can get to your Bible, just write it down or just go back and, re and review uh, the tape. Amen? Turn with me, if you will, to 1 John, and I'm going to read this to you from the NIV church. 1 John, chapter 4, and we want to look at verses 9 through 10. 1 John, chapter 4, verse 9 through 10. Look what it says. It reads, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Amen. Atoning sacrifice for our sin. These, listen, church, these verses here gives us very clearly just how much we are worth. Amen. It gives us just how much we are worth. Okay? All right. Let's talk a little bit about some self-esteem here. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay? So, so what is self-esteem? What, what is that? Well, in your younger years, okay, not one person, just say, not one person valued you in your younger years. Even, even people in your own family, maybe they didn't value you at all. No one found pleasure in you. Amen. No one found favor with you. No one. Since no one esteemed you, listen carefully, then you had no self of self-esteem. No one esteemed you. You see, you could easily see which of the other children were treated with value. Amen. And as a result, they felt valuable. Okay? When you are treated with value, amen, it makes you feel bad. All right? That's why it's very important that we that, 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 that we treat our children, let them know that they are valuable, let them know that they are important, let them know that they are significant, and then treat them that way. Amen? That don't mean that you let them have their way or doing whatever they want to do, but they need to know that they are important, that they are somebody special. Amen. And who better to give them that assurance than you? They're the father or the mother or, or whomever. Amen. If they're living with you. You see, your sister or your brother, amen, was one of these highly favored ones. So what makes you feel good about yourself? Huh? Do you consider your opinion is worthy of consideration? Is that why you don't say nothing? Is that why you don't speak up? Do you see that? Amen. Even as an adult, sometimes people won't speak up or they won't say that because they feel like their opinions are not worthy of consideration because they've been passed over so many times. A lot of times that happens right in church. Amen. People sometimes they just freeze up. They won't say that because they figure, well, you know, I gave ideas about this. I, I gave uh, ideas about that. Nobody never take my ideas. Nobody never, you know, and they feel like, well, you know, they just not worthy of consideration. So they just shut down. Don't ever feel that way about yourself. It has nothing to do with you. Amen. Or do you expect others to 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 respect your boundaries? Do we expect other people to? to, to uh, respect our boundaries. You see, God gave us boundaries, amen, to create love. Amen. To create love. You see, the boundaries are there for some for, for a reason. You see? And in one, one of the days I'm gonna get around and I'm gonna teach a complete lesson on boundaries. Amen, because they're so very important. And people just break them all the time. You see? Do you expect others to respect your boundaries or do you 
hold yourself in such low self-esteem that you do not establish and maintain healthy boundaries. Amen? You see, boundaries that line up with God's purpose for your life. Okay? You see, the Bible tells us here, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he says, above all else, he tells, he said, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart. Some people just, just give their heart to anybody. He wants to guard our hearts, yeah? okay? Because they, he said, they are the well spring of life, okay? So, you, you see, the heart is first. It speaks of the inner life, the mind, the thoughts, the motivation, the desire. The mind is the fountain from which the action springs. Okay? If the fountain is pure, the stream that flows from it will be pure as well. Amen? As a man thinks, so is he. So, so this verse here emphasizes the importance of a clean thought life. Okay? You see, to esteem it means to set a high value on. Or to esteem is, is a translation of the Hebrew word hasab. H-A-S-A-B. Hasab. Amen. Which means to consider. Amen. Plan. Reckon. Or think over. To have self-esteem is to respect or have Amen. High regard for yourself. Amen. Have high regard for yourself. Okay? Let nobody else determine what your worth is and who you are. Set a high value on yourself because God does. Amen? Now, I'm going to break this off right here, and we're going to pick back up next week and finish unpacking this and, uh, the rest of this lesson. Amen? We're going to cut it off right here, and we'll pick back up right here next week. Okay? So please, if you can, continue to follow along with us throughout this lesson, because it's going to be a blessed lesson. It's going to be a very enlightening lesson. Amen? Because we are worth somebody. We are worth something. God, as I said before, God didn't make no job. Amen? Each and every one of us are worth something. In the eyes of God. Maybe not in the eyes of man. So stop trying to please man. Okay? And keep your focus on God. He's the one that's going to bless you. All right. God bless you. I hope the lesson is making sense to us. And I hope it's, it, it, it'll be a blessing to us. Amen? All right. Let's stop here. Father, we come once again to your presence. We thank you, dear Lord, for your word. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you want to do. We thank you, dear Lord, for just keeping us safe, dear Lord. And no harm or danger coming upon us. We ask your blessings, your continued blessings upon those who have to pray. Those who are uh, down in the southern part of our, of our, our country, dear Lord, who are suffering from those uh, massive tornadoes all that bad weather that destroyed their homes, destroyed their lives, and lost many loved ones. We ask you to put, put your arms around them, dear Lord, and hold them close to you, bless them, especially. We thank you, dear Lord, for everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do. So just watch over us throughout the rest of this week. This we pray in your holy name, dear Lord, and for your sake. Amen. God bless you. And may his face shine upon you. May his confidence shine upon you. And I hope you have a blessed week. And I hope you are preparing to have a blessed and Merry Christmas. And keep God first in whatever you do. Amen. And remember, keep your face covered. And uh, stay safe. Because this virus out here is serious. And we want everybody to stay safe.
May God bless you. God have a blessed week. And we'll come back next week and finish unpacking some most of this lesson. Amen. All right. God bless you. Have a blessed week.